time to start a Mustang. Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and part two of the Plastic Models for Beginners 148 scale Tamiya P51D Mustang. And yes, I said P51D Mustang as opposed to F51D Mustang. And if you haven't watched the intro video to this build series, maybe go take a look at that. I'll put a link at the end of the, today's video and uh, you can check that out. But basically what it boils down to is I'm not doing a Korean War version. I'm doing a World War II version because I want to do a specific aircraft uh, of a plane that was based in the Pacific. So, with that out of the way, let's get started building this thing. Now, just to clarify, this is Plastic Models for Beginners, which means that I will be doing a very thorough step-by-step -step build of this kit. I'm going to be explaining, at least initially, the process I use to take the parts off the sprues, how I clean them up, how I cement them, all that type of thing. As each video progresses, I will probably do that type of thing off camera just to save a little bit of time so I can be thorough as far as the assembly, painting, and all that. So if this is not the first time you've built a model and you're an old hand at it, maybe you can catch some tips or hints that I might have that you don't do that might make things easier. Or if you have some that might make things easier for me, you can put them in the comments section down below. So let's get started. As I go along, I'll discuss what tools I'm going to be using and how I use them. And I'm going to keep it as basic as possible as far as the tools I used. I'm not going to get anything weird, but it's going to boil down to having uh, my cutter, um, hobby knife, various tweezers, clamps, drill bits, various brushes, various adhesives, and other such things that I might find along the way. Sanding sticks, um, that's pretty much it. If I think of other things, I'll talk about them as I get to them, but they're all fairly basic can be gotten most places. Some of this stuff you don't even know to need to go to a hobby store to get. It can be gotten craft stores, some stuff you can get in the beauty supply section of a pharmaceutical store or you know, like a pharmacy or a druggist or chemist or whatever they call them in other countries. So I'll just uh, explain what I'm using as I go. If you don't have it and you think you need it, Go ahead and get it and be cool. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to assemble the pilot seat, which is the seat and this uh, back portion here. So that is A16 and A15. So we need sprue A, which is this one, and we need parts 15 and 16. So what I do is I take my cutter. Now there are different types of cutters. This type here, which has a real fine blade, and then there are these types here. Either will work fine. Some people even use nail clippers, small scissors, stuff like that. Some people just use their knife. I like this particular cutter here because I can get really close to the part, make a nice clean cut, which means there's less cleanup afterwards. So let's cut these off. Move that 
that out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Like that. So as I'm cleaning this up, I'll talk a little bit about what I plan on doing as far as the paint. Um, now I'm going to use this. I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, sanding stick. To sand a little bit of the sprue gate that's left. Get that smooth like that. This one here. Sometimes you have a little bit of chunk that you can't quite get with the sanding stick on an edge like this. Just use your knife. Scrape it off like that. Let's cut that a little closer there. Like that. So what I was going to say is there's a number of different ways you can paint this stuff. You can either paint the parts individually, then assemble them, or you can put them in place, paint them, and then do any detail painting, paint any detail painting in place. And I'll demonstrate all that as we go. But um, I like to assemble as much as possible and then paint whenever whenever I can. It just makes it a little bit easier put the bare plastic together and then paint it but sometimes it can fluctuate especially on an aircraft kit so just uh, bear with me and I'll show you what I'm talking about so first we need to glue this seat on here now I use two types of cement I use a thicker cement which I have two different types I've got the Tamiya um, cement which this is a little bit thicker this model master liquid cement for plastic models, which is kind of nice because it's a thick liquid with this really cool applicator tip. And then the one I use most frequently is Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Sometimes you'll see it abbreviated TET, TET. This is very thin and it's really good for a lot of things, but not quite everything, hence having a few different types. If you can only have one cement, this is the one I would suggest. But for now, let's glue this together. So using this cement here, I'm just going to put some right there like that. And then put the seat right on top like that. So the next thing I do is this next sub-assembly, which is the instrument panel and rudder pedals, which is A11 and A5. A11 and A5. Same thing. Gonna get real close. Cut it off nice and clean. There and there. Touched up a little bit with the sander. Like that. Now, maybe you'll remember I mentioned flash. There's a very little bit of flash around this edge here. Plastic that seeped between the two halves of the mold during the mold process. So I'm gonna lightly clean that up with a sander. Sanding sticks I use, in case you're interested, some people like to ask, are Infini brand Ultra Precision Series. I like these because they're kind of smaller. 
and some. So they're easy to handle. A lot of sanding sticks are bigger. I like this size here for most things. Okay, so then here's something else to look for. Sometimes you'll have a part and you'll have uh, remove. In this case, it's a little bit of sprue that's in between there, so that needs to be cut off. Just part of the molding process, I reckon. Like that, and then I'm gonna use my knife to trim that off like that then this glues here now I guess theoretically you could get it backwards but it's not going to fit that great going backwards you just got to remember that's where the pilot's feet are going to be so they need to be facing the same direction as the instruments. So I just have that set in place right, whoops, right there, like that. Now I'm going to show you how, to me, extra thin works. Now sometimes, if you watch other videos, you'll see people take the part, they'll take the Tamiya extra thin, and they'll slather it on there, and then put the part in place. That will work mostly, but the actual proper way to use, to me, extra thin or any real ultra thin cement is to put the parts in place, then touching the brush to the parts that need to be glued, capillary action will draw the cement in between the parts and it will flow evenly throughout. Sometimes I use tweezers to make sure it's bottomed out really well like this. Okay, so there you go. There's the second sub-assembly. Instrument panel and rudder pedals. So the next thing that needs to happen is I need to cut this bottom portion off here which is um, A17. That is the floor with the battery compartment, battery, battery and radio compartment and fuel tank. <coughs> this one, I'm going to show you how I do some parts. I'm going to cut it a little bit away from the part, leaving a big chunk of the sprue gate in place so I can easier clean it up when you have like real, a lot of shapes going on. You can't quite get the uh, cutter down in there. This is the way that works for me. And then I'll put it right up against it and cut it there and there. Okay, <clears throat> so there's that. So then the next part I need is the control stick, which is B1. I also need the radiator, which is A7. So let's get A7 first. A7 and... B1. Okay, so again, cut this off really close. This one off really close. Sand it a little bit. here. 
Now, this has a bit of a mold seam line on it, in addition to this little bit of uh, sprue gate. So there's a couple of ways you can handle that. One <clears throat> is taking your knife, I don't even know if you can see this. Hopefully you can see that little bit of right along that edge there. You can take the sharp edge of your blade, just put it right on top of that and then just scrape it smooth. Twist it a little bit so it kind of blends it into the actual curve of the surface. Same on this rubber boot down here. A grip. Same thing here. Now another way you can do it is take a really thin sanding stick and sand it off. Like that. And down here where there's some texture going on, some uneven surface, I'll use my knife. Like that. And then this part <clears throat> goes here. And the orientation is the grip part of the control stick is kind of curved. That curve needs to face forward. So it's going to go just like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here's something I do when you have a hole all the way underneath like that. I will take to me extra thin, touch it there, and let the cement get drawn in underneath. Like that. And then, if it's a little bit crooked, like it is in this case, take my tweezers, straighten it up. Okay? So there we go. So let's see, the radiator, radiator, okay the radiator fits right here. So. Duplicating the orientation of the illustration, the radiator cooling the louvers face this way, which is the back of the aircraft. And the way it glues into place, there are these two tabs here that fit on either side of that protrusion there. Before I do that, we've got some stuff inside of here probably not real necessary to clean it up because it's going to be kind of difficult to see up in there when, when the aircraft is assembled and it's got the rest of the parts in place but I am going to remove this bit of ejector pin mark or whatever it is and what an ejector pin mark is all these recessed sometimes protruding round circles are where the mold presses the part. They're, they're all over on the sprue. So they press the sprue out of the mold. And most, you know, especially on modern kits, most modern kits, they're in um, places that they're not as noticeable, but on, especially on older kits, sometimes they'll be right in the middle of some detail. And it's necessary to clean it up if you don't want to see that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's glue this into place. So again, got these two tabs here, go right there. And it'd be, you'd be hard pressed to put this the wrong direction because there's these little angles here. And if you were to try and put it in place, it wouldn't fit properly. 
so it kind of forces you to put it the correct way. Can be done though, incorrectly, as I've done on occasion in my modeling life. But again, I'm going to hold it in place, take my cement, apply some on that side, make sure it's stuck good into place. The nice thing about to me extra thin is it dries really quick. And then make sure that side's pressed down. It's not really necessary, but I'm also going to put some right along this edge here. Like that. Okay, I'm going to let that dry for a minute and tell you about another kind of, to me, extra thin cement that's called quick setting. It's really fast and it's good for tacking stuff into place um, quickly. The stuff dries really quick. But it's also hotter, which means it'll melt the plastic more, so you have to be a little bit more careful. Okay, so we got this part in place. So now I have to determine what I'm going to do as far as painting, because this type of stuff, it's extremely difficult to paint it once it's inside the fuselage. So it has to be painted before. And I'm at a point where I need to decide what I'm going to do. So, as I said earlier, I can paint everything. <clears throat> or I can break it up. So I think what I'm going to do, I could put the seat in place and paint everything, which would work, but it would be a lot more difficult to get paint down into this space between the seat and the fuel tank. So I think I'm going to leave that off. Paint it before. Then the other thing is I could paint this in place. But again, it's going to be hard to paint down inside of there. And I also have to remember that I am going to be applying a decal here and it's a lot harder when it's in place. So I am going to paint these things all off or as sub assemblies. So the first thing I need to do is, um, and here's the way I do it. Other people can do it other ways. It's just, this is the way I like to do it. I've got some, whoops, stuff that I'm dropping. I've got these handy alligator clip things that I can use to hold these while I paint them. So what I do is in a place where um, the part is going to be glued, like this little tab here that fits down inside of this hole here, I'll just clamp it on there like that. That way I don't get paint all over my hands. So there's that one, same thing here. like that so that one's ready and then for this here i can actually clamp it right here like that so i've got them all nice and clamped then some people use styrofoam some people use cardboard some people use whatever i have this handy little turntable here that these will fit in like this or I can put the parts as they're drying. Okay, so these parts are ready to go. So the next thing I need to do is I need to get my uh, painting table or my paint booth ready. And I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, so this is my paint booth that I will be using for painting this. Um, I'm only going to demonstrate it seldom in this series of videos because I have to move my camera around and all that kind of stuff. And once you see how I've done it, how I do things, then, you know, you'll know what's going on. But basically what I'm going to do is 
prime everything first using my Andy Dandy Iwata HPM2 single action airbrush. And for my primer, I will be using Steinle Res. Before I get going, sometimes I like to look ahead in the instructions. So like in this case, the fuselage, that's going to be the next thing. So this is all going to go in the fuselage. So in order to save some time, I'm going to jump ahead. I'm going to take these parts here and I'm going to prime the inside of the fuselage. So it's ready to go for paint as well. So that way I can prime all of this stuff and paint all of this stuff in one go. Saves a little bit of time, saves a little bit of cleanup. So I'm going to get that stuff prepped and ready to go. All right, once I have my primer thoroughly shaked it up, I'll put it in the cup and then I'll start spraying. So I need to turn my fan on on this because so that's going to drown out any talking probably. So just uh, maybe I'll add some music or something while the spraying is going on so you're not hearing just the motor run. So put my paint or my primer in here and then I'll start spraying. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the interior green color on oops, these parts here and the 
the uh, interior of the fuselage. And to do that, for this, I'm going to be using Mission Models, Interior Green, with some thinner stuff. So again, I'm going to be doing this with uh, no talking because the fan will be making racket. Alright, here we go. that the green is dry I can do the black so the first thing I need to do is um, I need to tape off some stuff I need to tape off some stuff with some masking tape so I can paint the black. So let me get my masking tape out and for this I'm going to be using Tamiya masking tape. And let's start with the cockpit part here, the floor. Now, something else I need to do. Now, this calls for, uh, let's see, XF10, which is flat brown. So, the floor is supposed to be a, basically a wood color. It's supposed to be plywood. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Mustang floors, even though they were wood, they were painted over in black. And then some of that would start showing through, in World War II at least. So um, I think I'm going to check my references real quick and see if that's the case or not. All right, so I did a little bit little, little, uh, a little bit of research and it seems that the floor was indeed painted black so um, and then this front part here was black or, I'm sorry was the interior green so what I need to do is I need to tape off this part here this part here and I think this part here and paint the floor black. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to take some masking tape, thusly. This will be the easy one. And just put it in place. It's kind of, oh man. Sorry if you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just doing this so I can line it up a little bit better. It didn't work that great, so let me try it again. There we go. That looks pretty good. That's going to be behind the cockpit or the um, instrument panel anyway, so it's not really going to make that big a difference if it isn't perfect. So we got that. Wrap this around like this so it doesn't stick to everything. Okay, and then I need to, so this floor needs to be black and so does this up here. So what I'm going to do there whoops 
So here's what I'm going to do here. Um, the only part I'm really going to tape off is going to be this upper edge here. Because this, once it's in the cockpit and the seat and everything is in place, I'm not even going to see this. So what I'm going to do is using my Maybe I will tape that off. Let's see. Let me let me do some measuring here first. So that is one, two, three, just shy of four millimeters. So let's see what it is. And yeah, just just shy of four millimeters. So yeah, this will work. So what I have here is an Infini Easy Cutting Type A uh, mat. And the way this works is you basically stick a piece of tape, depending on what width you want, you can stick it on like this, and then using a new blade, you can cut perfectly straight lines like this. But in this case, I just so happen to have this already cut, so I can use this. So cut that like that. And then using tweezers. right here like this like that and then using I'll cut or well since I cut this just real skinny piece here I'll use that these are one millimeter in width. Hopefully it's not too wide. I don't think it will be. And put that right across this little ledge here. Now, I could do this, I can paint this with a regular, you know, just a paintbrush, but since I'm spraying other stuff black, might as well just make it easy on myself, because I really don't mind masking stuff at all. So, there we go. Um, so that looks pretty good. So now I need to tape this part off here. And I think for that, I will use my other to me a masking tape, which is I think this is six mil, yeah. Take this off here. Like thusly. Like that. Wrap it around. Like that. All right, so we got that. So now, I just need to make sure the top is covered. that. 
that. Is this a lot of work? Well, maybe. Maybe for some people, but like I said, I don't mind masking stuff. So I actually kind of enjoy the challenge because I would rather bigger stuff get sprayed with an airbrush than try and paint it with a, um, just a paintbrush. So, okay, so that's all that. So that's ready to go. That's ready for paint. So I will put that there. The next thing I need to do is tape off the rudder pedals. You know, it's probably not really necessary because they're going to be so far into the, underneath the inside of the cockpit that it's probably not going to get seen much. But I'll do it anyway. We're just using some small pieces. Stuff like this is real easy to mask, actually. I mean, it can be tedious, but it just takes a little bit of patience, a little bit of time. So maybe I can get that. Okay, there we go. Okay, so got that. So that's ready to go. Then next, I need to this part here, this plate up here is uh, black. So I am going to tape that off. So this is a case where it'll just be easier to do with the paintbrush. So I'll leave that. And then the last thing is to paint or tape mask off the inside of the fuselage. And that is black from this point here back. And then this point here back. So that'll be fairly simple. Just take this. Tape it like that. And there we go. And I'll do the same thing on this side. So there it is. So you've seen me paint the other part, so I'm not going to change my camera angle. I'm just going to go ahead and spray this stuff black and then come back. All right, so now I can peel off this masking tape like that. So those are done. I've got some detail painting to do on that, but I'll do that later after I finish up with these parts here. So let's get all the masking tape off. All right, so the next color I'm going to paint is the olive drab parts, which is the um, seat back and the boot around the base of the control stick. And to paint that, I'm going to use Vallejo Model Air 71.016 US Air Force olive drab. So, Drop a few drops in here like that. And begin. I'll get this started 
show you what I'm doing. Then I'll do most of it off camera because the only thing worse than watching paint dry is watching paint being applied. Like that. All right, the next color I need to paint is going to be the uh, the black parts, such as these two things here, the uh, actual grip portion of the control stick. Um, there are also parts that need to be painted black on here, but uh, I'm not sure that's gonna make a whole awful lot of difference. But we'll take a look. So for this, since I want it to be a little bit of different sheen, not that it'll be visible, but I just wanna see how it works. So I'm using Mission Models Gloss Black Base for Chrome. So, <coughs> let's see what it looks like. So, This part here, this dial or knob or whatever it is here and the top of this here I think it's a compass but I'm not sure so set that aside and then do these here and for painting stuff like this since it's raised detail it's kind of easy because all you got to do is just touch it right on the top. Don't worry about the sides. So it makes it a little bit easier to paint. And then the grip portion of the control stick. All right, so there's that. Okay, while I'm painting stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the side detail on the um, cockpit and the armor plate for the headrest there. And for that, I'm going to use NATO black again. So put me a drop or two in there. The old handy dandy paint and brush. And let's see, let's do the headrest first. So same thing. I'm just going to continue painting this off camera and I'll come back and do the uh, side panels of the cockpit. Okay, so now 
can start on the cockpit side details. So the instructions show yeah, all this stuff on the side gets painted black. So it's going to be pretty easy. Just like that so I'll continue off camera since it's not necessary to watch all of this it just takes a takes a steady hand bracing the fingers and thumbs to keep keep everything stable okay the next color I need to use is uh, silver so I'm using model air metallic silver so I need to paint this uh, radiator intake, I believe, and the radiator itself. Um, and I'll probably go ahead and hit the inside of this because it's going to be hard to spray later with the rest of the fuselage because it's going to be tucked up inside of the fuselage with like a, um, a cover over it. So I need to paint those two parts and I think that's it. So as I'm shaking this up, tip of the day, it's always best to have separate brushes for your metallic paints. And the reason being is no matter how well you clean them, sometimes there can be just a little bit of silver paint left or whatever metallic you're using and that could show up in other colors when you paint so just a little uh, just a little tip of the day there for you okay so we got that so then using this and this is something I could have sprayed but small parts there's not really any need to break out the old sprayer to do it sprayer <coughs> airbrush excuse me so we'll just get <clears throat> and I'm all this stuff that I'm getting a mess on is uh going to be inside of the fuselage in a non-visible area so hopefully there we go all right there's that and then um, let's get this You know what, I am going to use the airbrush for that because that, that's just going to take too long because of all the little ridged detail. So I'm going to go off camera with this. And um, since I've already demonstrated airbrushing and spray that. All right, the next thing I need to do is I need to put the decal on the instrument panel. So... I can now demonstrate that. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the decal off the sheet. And let's see here. Now what I'm going to do is you may not be able to see it on camera, but I'm going to cut it really close to the, pan the instruments themselves.
so I get as much of the carrier film removed as possible on the top because I don't want it to have trouble with this little ridge here of detail and then I'm also because I have to glue the gun sight in at some point I want to cut this part out as well so it's not in the way because the carrier film can especially on to me a decals can be kind of thick close over here close here here there there bottom there's not much carrier film so I can uh, leave myself something to grip on right there so got that so let me get my decal water which is just room temperature water nothing special a bit of paper towel here put my instrument panel here get my tweezers dip the decal in water while the decal is soaking um, on this piece of paper towel here so it can loosen up the adhesive I will get out my decal solvents in this case I'll be using microset and microsol and what these do is number one the set helps it does a couple of things the main thing is is it helps the uh, decal to stick to set on the surface it's a setting solution softens decals and improves adhesion also can be used as a decal remover then you have microsol which is a setting solution for decal softens decals blah 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 and what that does, that kind of melts the the um, decal into the surface detail. So like in this case, you know, you have all these dials and stuff. If you just stick the decal on there, it's just going to be pretty flat. Uh, but this way, it will kind of dissolve the decals into that, into that surface detail to give it a little more three-dimensional look. <laughs> so that's what those are for. So now it's okay. The decal is now sliding, so it's ready to come off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the micro set, and I use two different brushes. I don't know if it's really necessary, but I do. And I'm just going to apply. Whoa, that's a bit much. Another thing this does is it helps the decal kind of float a little bit. So you can get it right where you want it. Partially slide that off. Line it up. Hold it in place with this toothpick. And okay, so it's a little bit crooked. So I'm gonna do using this brush. going to attempt to 
get it to move sometimes a little bit more decal solution underneath the decal will help now let me use this knife here there we go that's another nice thing about uh, Tamiya decals is because they're so thick they're pretty tough so you can manhandle them with a with a knife okay that looks pretty lined up so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take q-tip slash cotton bud slash whatever you want to call it depending on where you're from and kind of just press this down into the detail while at the same time squeezing out any extra fluid okay so there it is so the next thing I'm going to do after I put the lid on here is I'm going to use the micro saw and my micro saw specific brush and I'm going to brush some on here like that I don't want it to puddle up too much but I want to have a good bit on there okay so now we just let that dry and once you put your micro saw on you don't want to touch it until it is dry okay so now I can glue the seat in and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to kind of mark this where the contact points are because I want to remove the paint where it's going to be glued it's not totally necessary but it's just something actually it's something my dad taught me years ago like good grief almost 50 years ago when he would build models he would always scrape the paint off so he'd get a nice nice uh nice plastic on plastic weld and it's just something that stuck with me so let's put that in position there and then using my Tamiya extra thin a little bit there and a little bit there Make sure it's pressed into place there I'm gonna have to touch that paint up because it has rubbed off so I'm gonna have to put some black on top of that but I'll do that once it dries and then once this dries and I see if the uh, decals are gonna fully conform then I will glue this in place now this is sat for a little while and that hasn't that decal hasn't snuggled in there as nicely as I'd like so I'm going to break out the decal or to me a mark fit decal solution it's a little more potent than the Microsoft stuff Let's see if I can't get it to settle in a little bit better again just gonna let it do its thing all right so 
that finishes all of step one and part of step two. So I'm ready to glue the cockpit and the radiator or oil cooler, I should say, um, into the fuselage. So let me get that oil cooler. Okay, so I need to get, let's see, this one here first. And this goes here. need to make sure it lines up properly because there's a little L-shaped part right there that the fuselage, this corner right here, fits in. So that all looks pretty good. There's a pin that goes in that hole, and then this little bracket fits right there like that. And that's just kind of a it's kind of a weird way to do it, in my estimation. So that I think is going to be a little problematic. So let me take a look at it here and see how I'm going to fit this in here. There we go. It's easier to do it without the cockpit in place. So let me put it, let me get it lined up. There we go. my cement the bottom where the pin is and right here hold it and make sure it sticks and then we can do the cockpit so first I'm going to mark this because I want to scrape some of this. I want to scrape a little bit of that paint off. along that line I made get it down to the bare plastic okay so that's all scraped now so we're ready to go here okay so we got that hold it in place here start right here that first and the instrument panel make sure it's pressed in there and then back there behind the radio compartment and right 
it down here. Hold all this in place and make sure it sticks good. All right, so next, now it does dry, I'm gonna test fit this on here, make sure everything lines up properly and uh, all the gaps will close up all around the fuselage, which they do. So all is good. Okay, so now I've got to glue all this mess together. So if you haven't watched any of my aircraft builds before, uh, I'm going to demonstrate here how I glue a fuselage together. Hopefully, most of the time, it works pretty good to get the least amount of misalignment, stuff like that. So it has to keep the, the cleaning and scraping and sanding and all that down to a minimum. So what I do is I pick a part and I start there and I do one section at a time, focusing on keeping it aligned as closely as I can, because that'll eliminate a lot of having to clean up and then rescribe panel lines and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to start at the front right here. You'll notice I have a little bit of a gap right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my cement like that and let it just run down the seam. I'll do a little more in the front here, do it from the inside, and then simply squeeze it together and eyeball it and make sure that it's as aligned as I can get and squeeze it and I don't know if you can see on the video but there's a little bead of cement molten plastic kind of coming out and that, if I do it right, will serve as a kind of a filler. Because instead of there being a crack, I'll have this nice bit of plastic, melted plastic that is squeezed out. So then all I have to do is once it's cured really well, I don't want to do it whenever it's still soft because it'll shrink. Once it's cured really well, then I can scrape it lightly, sand it lightly, and minimize damaging the surface detail. So there's that. So I'm going to let this dry for a few seconds. And once that's dried sufficiently to hold in place really good, then I move on to the next, which will be this part here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put some cement there, 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 right there. And then do the same thing. Give it a good squeeze. Like that. And make sure that one sticks together. So with that glued, now I can move on to this um, section back here. And do the same exact thing. Except this one, I'll probably, well, I may, I may go ahead and do all this at once. 
because it's going to have to prob probably be clamped. So it'll make it a little easier. So I'll just go all the way around. Giving it a good squeeze. So, I get some clamps here. Not forget that right there. Clamp it. Around like that. Some cement in there. For that, I'm going to clamp it with this type of clamp. All right, so now I need to let that one dry a bit. Okay, and last, I gotta glue the front here, the top. So again, I'm gonna do the same thing. Put a bead along there. 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 This stuff, I'm not as worried about it marring the finish because. Um, and right there. But I do want to make sure. That is lined up as good as I can get it. Use my big clamp here. Kind of eyeball it from the front and make sure that's nice and lined up. Let that dry. All right, so that concludes step two. So next, I'll go ahead and do uh, step three before I call this video quits. And that is the uh, engine cowling and this air intake here. So let me get those parts cut off, which are B10 and A9. A9 is already off. So B10 is right here. So I'll cut these off and get those cleaned up. All right, the parts are cleaned up. So now, I think before I glue this on here, I am going to do the... Uh, the cleanup of this stuff. So I need to let this stuff dry. So I think with that, I'm going to call this video quits. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be. It didn't really do a whole lot except for steps one and two, but that included a lot of painting, a little bit of uh, weathering type stuff. And my seat is crooked. I can see that. So I'm sad, but cockpit's going to be closed. So I'm not going to sweat it too much. 
Um, that's a bummer. But, uh, yeah, so that's where I'll end this. Next time when we come back, I will clean up these seams, get these parts glued on, and then we can move on to the wings. So, if you liked this video and liked following along, please hit the like button. And uh, if you want to see more of this build and other builds, please hit the subscribe button so you can follow along on this one. So, as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and the 148 scale Tamiya P51D Mustang. And until next time, I will see you all later.